A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three booths, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. This second Sunday of Lent, we hear the story of the transfiguration and the glory of Jesus shown through. It's a powerful moment of grace up on Mount Tabor. Who was there? Peter, James, and John. The closeness of this intimacy, this friendship, these very special disciples, these apostles, is evident. And the reason Jesus took them up on the mountain, because they were to go down from that mountain to the scandal of the cross. These last two Fridays and every Wednesday of Lent, We've been making the way down the Via Della Rosa, the road to Calvary, the place of the skull, Golgotha. We've been making the stations of the cross, and we are very aware uh, of what was going to happen. Even Archbishop Fulton Sheen said that uh, Peter uh, was a curious mixture of flaws and virtues. He was to deny our Lord three times before the cock crows. And yet he was to be crucified because he felt not worthy uh, upside down. Uh, And that is a a very powerful witness to his faith. What we see here uh, is a moment of transfiguration where the glory of God shines through. The priest in the old Latin uh, would say, Per ipso et cum ipso et ipso et tibi deo patri. Through him, with him, in him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father. And that glory, the ancient language is uh, Greek, is doxa. That's where we call uh, that special moment the doxology. This is very important because uh, the new Archbishop Fulton Sheen, Bishop Robert Barron, as he reflects on this moment, Uh, This is important as we search the church fathers. Remember uh, Irenaeus, the time of Augustine, and basically the words that we use uh, when the deacon, it's great to have you back, Deacon Bob. Uh, Deacon Dave's with the bishop uh, with the big mass, 3,000 men that I left early to be here uh, for the Catholic conference, Uh, very powerful speakers. But what we see here uh, when the deacon puts the drop of water, he says silently, almost inaudibly, by the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. And what Bishop Robert Barron, whom we use in our RCIA, our journey uh, to Easter, uh, the beautiful uh, Catholicism series, uh, very powerful Uh, expression of the Catholic Church from all around the world. Uh, Bishop Robert Barron says, this is a moment of deification. Think about it. 
So often we concentrate on uh, the ethics and the morality, but really uh, that's important. But the most important message is our belief in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. What is so important uh, in our faith is that the faith that has been here since 1856 when our ancestors made the bricks down in the little creek uh, and fashioned this church. Every seventh row, turning the bricks to reinforce it, but to say that the seven corporal works, the seven spiritual works, the seven days of the week, the seventh day God rested, the seven sacraments, the seven virtues, these things are bedrock. Today at the Catholic uh, Men's Conference, we heard Chris Stefanik, uh, one of the great uh, lay missionaries, the Catholic evangelist, a missionary disciple, and Dr. Scott Hahn from Franciscan University. We are so honored to have uh, Franciscan University's finest, uh, their choral ensemble, their sextet, uh, with us, uh, Beatus. This is their premier inaugural visit, and they chose St. Mary Mattingly Settlement. Uh, they have practiced for months and years uh, to make this moment such a moment of grace. And it's not a concert. It's entering into the sacred, entering into the mystery, the tradition of our ancestors. It's embracing God at the very core and the fabric of our being. It's allowing God's grace to shine through us just as Jesus because the resurrection was to follow after the scandal of the cross. We are called to, in our lives, those words of the Stabat Mater, bruised, derided, cursed, defiled, she beheld her tender child. We have scars, the scars of life, and yet we offer those up for the poor souls in purgatory. We offer those up for our families and our friends who bear suffering. We have intentions in our hearts every time we come to Mass. But Mass is also Eucharistia, the Greek word which means to give thanks. It's like a thanksgiving. It's a meal that we gather, a family meal. It's also to give God glory and worship, that glory of the transfiguration. And that's why we go back to our roots. You know, Pope John Paul the Great, Pope John Paul II, began the World Youth Days. He was so proud of Franciscan University. It's one of the reasons we named our St. Francis Abbey Monastery Sanctuary uh, that name, Pope Francis, the Franciscan sisters that uh, gave us everything in Good Samaritan uh, Chapel. There is a sense that this simple life, 1182, the province of Umbria, the 12th century, he renewed the face of the church. I went on All Saints Day to join with these uh, students at Franciscan University. It's about an hour and 53 minutes from here. It's very close. They canceled all the classes, and everyone gathered for a, nearly a two-hour mass, and the students were praising God, receiving Eucharist because they believe in all their heart and soul. But the Eucharist is the body and blood, the soul and divinity of Christ Jesus. I've joined them for Eucharistic adoration and benediction, much like we have every first Friday, uh, every moment. And every Monday of Lent uh, over at St. Anne's, uh, not only Eucharistic adoration and benediction, but Vespers, the evening prayer of the church. You know, just like the monasteries, the monks, the abbeys, uh, there is a rhythm like our breathing. Uh, they kept the seven different sections of the day uh, holy, uh, starting at three in the morning and six and nine and noon and three in the afternoon and six in the evening and then later on at nine in the evening. You know, when the bells ring, they called all of the monks to prayer. I think that civilization was dead during the barbarian invasions in Europe. And it was the monks that, with the manuscripts, gave us all the great books that we were able to be preserved. You know, in our culture, 
Pope John Paul II says it's a culture of death. That's why he gave us Evangelium Vitae, a gospel of life. That life is what we are to proclaim. And yet, with all of that said, why in the first reading does God ask Abraham and Sarah, who were barren, who wanted to conceive a child, and then God had promised, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. Why did he ask him to sacrifice his only son, Isaac? Listen to him. The Latin word is ob audire, two words. We get the word obey. I think that as we listen to the gospel, it's not something that pushes us down. And this is very important. It's not something that we uh, grovel in the dirt like the snake uh, that was uh, to crawl after the Garden of Eden. It is something that, as we heard, the glory to shine through us when the deacon places the drop of water in the wine. By the mystery of this water and wine, as we said at the beginning, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. You know, as a priest, I get to be a part of so many lives. A couple days ago, I rushed to the hospital to see your brother, uh, Dale, who's so young, and we prayed and shared the sacraments with him. I visit the homes of uh, a woman who was uh, part of the royal family and ostracized to this country uh, with Holy Communion, uh, yesterday. It is important as we make these journeys that I also enjoy sharing the faith at Damascus. We had the sisters, uh, the Dominican sisters of Mary Mother the Eucharist, the Franciscan sisters, the priests, the world premiere pre-screening of the movie that will come out, the first totally Catholic movie, uh, Paul the Apostle, and the same ones that uh, were in it uh, was Jesus in Mel Gibson's The Passion of Christ, uh, Luke. Uh, it is Martin Scorsese and all these different folks. And we talked to the executive producer, Eric. They brought in afterwards a relic, a piece of the bone of St. Paul. And I remember visiting the University of Notre Dame uh, December 16th. And we walked into the reliquary of all of those bones of the uh, martyrs and of the saints. Well, we have a relic of St. Francis of Assisi. Now, usually we keep that over at uh, St. Anne's in Dresden. We will bring it over here. As we venerated the relic of St. Paul, you could have that sense that Paul the Apostle was in our midst. And we sometimes forget how they were persecuted how they were martyred, how they were tortured, so that we can have the faith. And sometimes we think, wouldn't it be nice if everything was Pollyanna and cushy and easy? But very often, the faith grows the strongest when it's persecuted, when it's bullied, when it's taunted, when it's made fun of. And that's why we are called to be the light, to be the yeast, to be the leaven. And I'll tell you, it was quite an inspiration knowing when I was at Mass uh, at Franciscan University on All Saints Day, not only were all of the students there and they wanted to be there, but all the saints that surround us at the Easter Vigil were also there, being with us in our heart, in the fabric of our being, in the breath that we take.